Welcome to this video. Today we are going to learn how to avoid using big chains of if and else and else ifs in the middle. And we are going to use instead an object to make the mapping between the value we want to check and the function we want to run or the value we want to display. In this example we have a function here called checking stuff we receive a code in this case we are using a string with a letter only inside a b c d e f g and so on and for each code we are checking in this case if the code is the a letter and if so we are declaring some random uh, variables and returning the sum of them this is a silly example of course but we will get the point and we will improve your code by looking into this silly example so basically you can see we have if else if and for each else if or if statement we have a return value and if we don't find the the code in the set from a to k we return null. It's a simple, simple function. And if we run the code by running the node and the name of the uh, JavaScript file, calling the function with letter B, we will get the value of 568, 568. There is the sum for these two variables. Of course, we can improve this. And firstly, let's see the check stuff too that is a slightly improved that is by not comparing the code directly with the string we should and we must avoid compare our variables to direct numbers direct strings we need to have a variable that holds that value we want to compare with so you can easily change the value without changing the comparison in multiple cases so for that i have here this object that maps the key name hey lowercase hey with the hey uppercase and so on until the k letter so if you get the options dot hey we will have the a letter value the uppercase basically in check stuff too we just rewrite the same logic it's a copy and paste and then we just replace the value of the letter with the corresponding property inside the object. Another approach can be having the comparison as we already did and then returning a function instead of declaring the values here we can uh, return a function and give the values as arguments to the function. This sum variables as you can expect is returning just the sum of the two variables. So if we call here the check stuff to and check step three, we should have the same result for all of them. Quite easy until now. So how can we now improve this code and reduce this if, else, and the, the number of lines of code we have here? Basically, we can use an object to create a mapping. And it will be here in our checking stuff using the object's power. We still receive the code, but as you can see, we just have like four lines of code and we can even reduce that by returning in the same line and not using the, the curly brackets there. So you can have two only two lines here, but to be easier to read, I will keep the, the return inside the bracket. And what we are using there, a functions mapping. What is that? Is this uh, functions that I'm going to uncomment here. Basically, we have an object with a key and a value. So we have a property there and we are using the object's power. Basically, you can access an object in two ways. Imagine we have an object. Uh, let me declare a new one here. Const object equals to and inside we have the key data okay you can access the property data by getting the object dot data or you can access by getting it the string so you are passing the name of the property as a string and that's the trick here we are declaring the codes as the name 
for our properties. If you remember, we, we are checking the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on with uppercase. So basically we declare inside our object the properties name as A, B, C, D, E, F, G as uppercase. So you can then access them like so, like object, and then we give the string with the name. And the value for our property will be the function we want to call with the given uh, arguments. Let me clean that. So basically, if, we, if I uncommon that, here I'm calling directly the functions mapping with the code B, so it will get into the um, object and go to the property B and return this value. The same will happen with checking stuff using the object's power and giving the B. Why? Because the B is the code and what we are checking. Basically, we are using here a guard clause and if we don't have that code as a property of our functions mapping, imagine the P letter is not there, so if it's not there, we return null. It is, it is the else case, we return null. But if the code we are receiving on the function, if there is a property with that name, we return that property value. So when it's the case of B, we will get there. We have B, yes, so we return this. If I now run this file, we have again the same value for the last two prints. And if, if you compare that, you can see four lines of code and a lot of lines of code. And it's way better, not only because we are reducing the code, but you can easily have more and more and more, let's call it conditions, and what to do in each condition. Imagine a game where we have some keys, when you press you go to right, you attack the opponent and so on and so forth. Imagine you start with only four keys to your game, but you need to add more keys. You just need to go there and put here the, um, the name for your code and then do some function there. And you can get the value directly or store in your mapping only the, the, the variable or even uh, bind some arguments to your function. As you can see in the next example, I'm going to uncomment that. Basically here we are using the same approach, but the sum variables, we are not getting uh, right away the values. We are binding the values. The first one is the, the scope, so the, this keyword, in, in our case, you can simply discard it and give it a null value. And then I'm passing a variable that is a variable high uh, defined here with the value one, two, three, just an example, it can be a, va a value there, and some random values. What I'm doing here, I'm not running the function right away, I'm setting the argument so when I execute the function, it will get these values. I'm preparing the function. So basically, when I call the mapping object, we give it the the code but we also need to execute because we are getting the function the value of our property now is not a value but it's a function so we need to execute that we can also use the call method to get the value of course so as you can see let me clear here so for the b values we are getting the, the first values here, the four ones, and for C, we have the other one. So you can execute that or use call without any arguments, but you can only use the execution uh, right away. Why I put here the call so I can introduce you to the next option. Of course, it's a five minutes video, so <clears throat> there's a lot behind the scenes. Um, I can uh, talk about that in another time. I'm adding here another another example, another function. This time it's to subtract. We have the sum variables that sums two variables and the subtract variables 
that subtracts one variable to another. In my mapping here, basically, I'm giving only which is the function for each property. So if the code is A, it will sum the variables. If the code is B, it will sub subtract the variables. And where are the variables? Where am I passing this variable one and variable two? I'm giving that in the moment I am calling and I'm using the call method. So again, the first parameter is the, the scope. In this case, we can ignore it and just give it null. And then I'm sending the a variable is the one, two, three value and 33. And I'm giving the code a. And I'm calling directly so you can see and using the checking stuff uh, function, this one that simply makes the mask for us. So let me save that and run. You can see we still have the values. We can use also call and only store the function names we need to execute without giving the real values to that. This is all for today. This is how you can improve your code with a silly example. I hope you can um, start from here and apply uh, this logic, this way of doing it to your code. And I hope you like the video and subscribe my channel so I can keep going with more videos on it.